Today I'm going to do a review on how to create a ring uh, around your planet and to um, make your star field and your sun and maybe a little bit of planet texturing too. Sort of an overall kind of planet review. Alright, so when you are making your ring, we'll just start with a new file. Um, you go to, let's, we'll say this is my, our planet. And let's make a texture for our planet. So typically you would get on the internet and um, look for planet textures. You could just search planet textures and it usually comes up with a few that are kind of neat. So here's a few. Um, let's just take this one. You want to take the dollar bill looking ones and you need to get them onto your desktop so you can drag and drop them onto your desktop. Um, I mean, there it is. And then um, my desktop's a mess, but you can go to your uh, student lessons and then just drag and drop it in there. Sometimes people make a separate folder, which is nice to keep it organized. I'll leave this one on the desktop though, just so I can use it for the demo. All right, so back to cinnamon. All right, so when you make the texture for that, you go New Material, and you double-click. Uh, it makes a new material down there as a white, kind of generic gray sphere. And you just go to Color, and where it says Texture, there's a um, big button right there with three little dots and making it blink on and off. And you click on that, and you go to get your, um, your file. Sometimes people put what's called a bump map on it, um, but we're not doing that. A bump map is typically a grayscale version of the same thing. They give the ups and downs and the highs and lows, like mountain ranges and valleys and things like that. Um, this one doesn't have a bump map. We could make a bump map out of the same picture with Photoshop, um, but just for, we're not gonna have that much um, interaction with the actual planet. We're not like landing on it or anything, so um, we don't need it. Uh, just color, boom, that's it. And you drag and drop it onto the word sphere or you can drag and drop it onto the planet itself so you just click hold down on the little sphere down there and then touch the word with your arrow over here or drop it on the sphere directly on the screen but sometimes there's so many objects on your screen you can't possibly drop it on the right one and so you want to take it and drop it on the word of the icon over there all right, so let's make a star field. So you go new material again for a star field, and you go to color, and you go to this time, the same button over here. There's a little button over here with a white arrow on it right there. Um, you click on that, and you go down to surfaces, and you go up to star field. And you want to take reflectance off because the star field is like a, an environment an endless environment. You don't want a big highlight in the middle of your space. It'll look weird. So you take that off. Check mark turns it off um, when there's no check mark. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, you go to um, luminance and turn it on and then go get star field again. And then now you have your stars and you put that on a um, from your environmental objects up here making it blink on and off. You go to a sky, it's just a generic endless object for the sky, and you put that on there. Um, when you render it, the stars will be kind of sparse, so you want to click on the texture tag right there and go down to the attributes, attributes, and where it says tiles V and tiles U, increase that number and then when you render it, you'll have more stars. These are just the general background filler stars. Um, we're gonna do other things here. Um, another thing I wanna do is I wanna take my sphere here. I wanna move it off um, the center dot there. That is called coordinate zero. Um, so I'll move it off to the side here. And coordinate zero is when you first make something, it's that spot and it's called coordinate zero because down here in position it says zero 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 
And for some reason, if you moved it off of like zero, like I just did this sphere, it'll give you the new coordinates, but if you ever want to put it back, you just type in zero, 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 and hit apply, and it's back. Um, I don't need that cube, so delete. So what we were going to do there is we put our sun there. When you put your sun there, you just it's a light from your light bulbs up here. <clears throat> and you're going to go to the attributes. And under general, the only thing you really have to do here uh, of all these things to choose from is no illumination. Because, I mean, with it, it shows like a natural, like an at, like the actual shadow would be is a planet orbits around the sun and night and day um, kind of thing and in months and years or whatever. But we don't want that just for our animation because it creates too much darkness. Uh, so aesthetically, <clears throat> we're just taking creative license with that little scientific aspect there. So we're going to turn off the shadow. So it, the light will be visible, it just won't cast any light. And then lastly, you choose your sun from lens up here, and you go where it says glow inactive, and you just choose one of the choices. And there's a lot of really nice ones in there. Sun number one is the more obvious one. And you can reduce the scale. You can reduce the brightness, and remember, every time you see these bullets on the side of anything, whether it's a light or a sky object or a sphere, um, you can animate those. Those are for keyframing. All right, so let's see what it looks like. So we go up to here at the top and hit render, and there it is. All right, now we're going to make a ring for this planet now. We need a texture for that. This is the last thing. And so we go to new material and um, we double click on that. And for color, there's, I have supplied you with a couple of ring materials. If you find one, you got to get something that's not horizontal but vertical. Um, let's see. I think on my desktop I put a space texture. I mean, people will be like, well, how could you tell? It's so messy. Um, go by name here. I have Saturn, but I didn't want to use that one. I wanted to use, there it is. Oh, space text copy. Okay, so let's see. Let's go get Uranus. The planet of many jokes. Uh, so Uranus should be in Saturn. These are all just ones that I've collected over the years. There it is. All right, so Uranus is has a grayish, like kind of bluish, bluish gray color, <coughs> cool gray. <coughs> um, we don't want the JPEG that we want the tip. Um, and, um, well, yes, that. And then what you do with this to give it its like ringy stripes and stuff like that, uh, you have to go down to alpha, which is a channel for transparency effects. And you just click on the button over there and, you know, go all and get your um, Uranus ring transmap. There it is. We want the, hor uh, the vertical. This is vertical up and down. This is horizontal. Okay. Um, so we want you can flip it and programs like Photoshop or uh, even preview should let you flip it. Um, unfortunately, when you go get it from um, the website we were using that supplied the free textures, Planet um, Pixel Emporium under Planets under Uranus. Um, these two files, when you click on them, they automatically download. They are, um, and you'll find them in your downloads folder, you just drag them out of there. <coughs> they are, um, unfortunately, um, horizontal. If you flip them vertically like this and then do a um, export, you can um, export it as a uh, TIFF and then save it and it should stick and allow you to use it now in cinema. It's just going the wrong way when you put it on the ring if you leave it horizontal. OK, 
Okay. And like, I think that one actually might be corrupt because uh, it didn't do anything. So let's let's see if we can find another one. We'll use the JPEG. See if that works. Okay. The JPEG works. Hooray! Even though the TIFF should work, you can see there's partial transparency there. That's why they put these check marks there so you can see the parts that are transparent. And you can mix and match these. You can mix and match them with Saturn's rings and whatever else you find. You don't have to just use these, <coughs> even though you should. Uh, all right, so now we have made our textures. We have reviewed how to make a sun. We have reviewed how to make our star field. We have reviewed how to make a planet and the planet uh, texture. Um, one last thing on the planet though is every primitive that you make, and these are all primitives right now, um, these are basic building blocks, have segments to them. And if you look at this planet, you can kind of see, let's actually just zoom in on it. You can actually see like those 24 segments as flat pieces. If you go over here and maybe like double it, it'll become a nice rounder planet. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry, I don't mean to keep sneezing and um, coughing all over the recording. Um, all right, so now to make the ring, the last thing today. So we're gonna go to the plane here under our primitive shapes. I'm gonna move that over to our planet. We can go to your top view and um, use that to kind of center it on the planet and what you're going to do is make it wide on the red axes red axes right there the x axes and then we're going to go back and look at it it doesn't have quite enough segments to it um, i'm going to turn off the star field temporarily it kind of makes it dark this little dot right here if you click next to sky if you click on that it'll turn it off and then to turn it back on you just click um, so it's kind of like a light switch. Uh, I turned it off because it was getting in our way. So I uh, want to add more segments to this so it can bend because uh, we're going to bend it. Uh, you would not use any of these other shapes that look like more logical for a ring shape. Um, and it's just the way the texture goes on it and stuff. So what we're going to do is go to width segments and we'll like triple that. And now it has more segments so it can bend easier. And what we use is a deformer. So we have all these deformers here and they pretty much do what they say. Um, some are a little bit mysterious, like correction and you know, spline rail, which we'll learn a little bit later. Right now we're gonna use what's called a wrap deformer. It has a big W on it. Allows you to wrap stuff around things. Good for labels, good for rings. When we do our explosion FX, um, and we blow up the planet for our space project, the little energy wave that comes out will be a, a similar ring. Um, all right, so you don't want it too thick, so I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. And then I'm going to make my wrap deformer and put the wrap deformer as a child into the plane. Okay, and right now it's inside the planet. Um, so let's just turn off the uh, planet. go to our wrap deformer and let's see what happened to oh there it is um oh okay i made a mistake <laughs> um i left the wrap deformer on coordinate zero and the planet and the plane are way over there so i have to make sure that i um let's turn that off and we'll just pull it out make sure that i put the wrap deformer um also centered on the planet because none of them are on coordinate zero so i mean i could have clicked on the sphere and wrote down the number here or copied it so i could copy that number and i could have gone to the wrap deformer and just like pasted it in there or typed it in there um to get it all in the same spot but you know i it's, it's like 650 right now so i'm a little tired <clears throat> and i made a mistake so, which happens, but, um, and that probably might happen to you. Just make sure they're all centered on each other and not like one's over here, one's over there. All right, so wrap the form back into the plane. Um, and so when it does that, you can kind of see how it's wrapping into a ring. 
It may do a number of things at this point depending on the size of your ring. So it may uh, actually be like smaller. Let's move it up so you can, let's move the whole thing up so you can see a little bit better. We'll recenter it later. Um, so the whole thing may like end up like big or small or maybe your plane is too wide and it looks more like a disc. Um, and it's it's like really small or something or if it's fitting inside the planet and you can't even see it um, and that all just you just have to scale it at this point so the first thing you want to adjust is probably the thickness of your plane or the thickness of the ring and then the second thing you want to play with is um, the wrap deformer which has two dots on the blue axes and the red axes, the Z and the X axes. And the blue one will expand the ring, and this is what we actually um, animate kind of when we um, turn it into an explosion, but <coughs> uh, we're not going to do the radius you see moving over here though, so don't just ignore that. Um, and then the one on the side here, what it, the ring will more often do is it'll wrap in on itself and overlap and over and over again until it looks like one of those old like gyroscope little pen uh, artsy craftsy things that's and um, you have to pull it apart yourself see how it's overlapping so you pull it apart by hand and then just bring it together until you can get it to be a nice seal. Don't let it, don't have an open gap there and try not to overlap it too much. If you overlap it too much, your texture shows up there, but I mean, it, it's hideable uh, since we're gonna, we don't have to fly around our spaceship on that side of the planet, so it, it wouldn't matter if anyone saw it. Um, no one's gonna see it, is basically my point. Uh, all right, so there is our, our disc. Now you notice it's quite not big enough for the planet, so that's when you would go to the blue one. And, you know, at this point, you can still adjust the thickness of your plane and do all kinds of adjustments. You can even add more segments if it's not smooth enough for you because sometimes people don't put enough segments in there and it looks very geometric. So you can go add a few more segments. Don't get crazy with the segments, though. Like, you don't need to go 10,000 or something. Um, just kind of, like, slowly increase it. All right, so there's our plane. Uh, now it will turn into a ring. Um, and what I want to do is get it on this planet, except in this particular mode, it's the axis is off to the side, and so kind of getting it all centered on the planet and stuff is a little bit uh, difficult. So we're going to start taking everything we build just about and turning them into advanced polygon. Uh, meshes and shapes and so I'm going to convert this instead of leaving it as a wrap in a plane which it's going to constantly have to calculate and recalculate every time I do something to it um, as far as the computer's processor goes so you're going to select that and under mesh in the menu bar you're going to go to conversion and do a um, current state to object when you do that um, sometimes mesh might not be there depending on the work mode someone was doing at your station and so if you go to layout and just put it on if you don't see mesh put it on standard and that will allow mesh to appear right there so mesh in the main menu bar conversion and then current state to object and what it will do is it'll create a copy as a polygon object and we always know polygons have this triangle anything that's a primitive will have whatever it is like if it's a sphere it has a sphere icon if it's a sky it has a sky icon it's a light it has a light icon polygons will always have a blue triangle no matter what it is that's how you can tell and those are more advanced shapes which you can do more too and they're not as limited as these primitive basic building block shapes are do i need this other plane in the wrap not unless i'm gonna like do some editing or something and i want to don't have to remake it um so likely if i came out with a good ring already i can just hit delete and get rid of that okay there's my ring now lastly the axis is still way over there and the reason i converted it is because we want to be able to move the axes around on stuff and you're this is your axis tool and what it allows you to do is move the center of the object. I can kind of like use the axes here to 
line it up on that center segment and this middle segment right there, uh, which continues over here, um, as a sort of a guide. All right, now that I've done that, remember to click off of the axis tool because it will, you'll go around like wrecking havoc on all your axes if you forget. And so now I can easily move it over there to my planet and I can like easily um, center it on the planet and uh, I can easily, the main thing is tilting it. So usually like giving it a little bit of a tilt uh, visually will allow you to see the ring um, better as you fly around on your spaceship from different angles because if you leave it like just horizontal flat it kind of sandwiches and becomes a little sliver and then what was the point of you know making this little design here all right and then you drag your texture on there swoop and then you can click render now if your texture let's do one more thing to show you what it looks like if you screw it up so if your texture i'm going to go make another um, uranus ring but i'm going to use the wrong one so I'm going to use the horizontal one. This is the wrong, I can't use this. But I'm going to use it anyways, just to show you what it looks like if you mess up and you did, forgot to flip the texture. And then we'll be done. Uh, so there's a flat one. Oh, that's a GIF. Uh, what do you use that one? Okay. So it'll, the stripes are going the wrong way, see? And so when you, when you throw that on there, and if you have your ring look like this, you use the wrong texture, or you the texture's going the wrong way. It's going horizontal, and you can always double click on the texture and see like, oh, oops. You gotta, you gotta flip flop it, and if you don't remember how to flip flop it, you can go back and watch the video, or um, just come over and ask me for help. I'd be more than happy to show you at the demo station um, how to do that. I'm gonna delete that texture because it's evil, and we'll put the good one on there. And then, ta-da, we have our planet. If you go to the other review file, you can see how to make your planets orbit around the sun and how to make the moons orbit around the planets. And today we're going to do the animation, and I'll have a review of that uh, probably tomorrow. Okay, so this kind of summarizes the review. I don't put every lesson as a YouTube. Um, I only kind of like do these um, sort of group summary reviews where you can go back and reference the lesson um, and the different aspects of the lesson. And of course, you know, if you don't want to watch the full video, you could always come and just ask me, and I'm more than happy to demonstrate it again for you. Okay, so good luck with your space.